come to the afternoon session, so maybe one sentence about the workshop in general. So I see this as connecting two threads in mathematics and sort of two physics threads, right? So the math threads are combinatorics and sort of algebra, algebraic geometry, and there's a mixed group. The two physics threads are scattering amplitudes, Feynman diagrams, that, that's the topic that we'll hear about now. Uh, and then there's sort of a second thread later in uh, tomorrow and on Friday on integrable systems, the KP equation. And I think it's exactly this interaction between these two plus two fields that, that we think is exciting. Without further ado, uh, Nick Early from uh, Max Planck Institute in Munich will tell us about bijoint scalars and the sociohedra from residues of generalized amplitudes. Okay, well, thank you, Ben. Thanks for the invitation to, uh, to speak today. It's uh, nice to be back in person. It's very nice. Um, yeah, so I am a mathematician by training. I have a PhD in math. And as you can see, uh, I'm currently a postdoc in, at a physics institute. Um, so my, my trajectory has been somewhat nonlinear. And which allows me, which positions me very, I think, rather well to, to tell this story because I, 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 can, I can see kind of both sides of, of what Bernd was saying, right? And so what I want to do today is uh, I'm going to try to keep things as simple as possible, um, but please uh, interrupt any time, ask questions, and I, I hope... Uh, I hope you'll enjoy. I'll give a. I, I want to emphasize that everything is extremely concrete, and uh, you can verify the computations yourself. In fact, uh, I'll, I'll give you uh, some exercises, some uh, some informal exercises, if you as you can do uh, as you like to to, to illustrate uh, uh, results. Okay, so this is joint work with uh, Freddy Cachazzo. Uh, a physicist in Canada at the uh, at Perimeter Institute for Theoretical Physics. Um, and, uh, oh yeah, and it has received support from the, uh, the ERC, the European Research Council, who is funding uh, the, the scattering amplitudes at uh, Max Planck Institute. Okay, so let's begin with a standard picture. Um, a four particle tree level scattering amplitude there are two planar Feynman diagrams in that theory. Is there a stick? Yes. Oh, well, here, here it is. There are two uh, planar tree-level Feynman diagrams. Planar here means that there is secretly a disk, and you're placing labels 1, 2, 3, 4 on the bodies of the disk, and in the interior, because we're only at tree level, we're putting a just a, a tree with... Uh, trivalent vertices, okay? To each edge, we assign a letter K. K is actually a, uh, K is actually a factor um, in Minkowski space. And uh, the property at each vertex is that the vectors sum to zero. Okay, the, uh, and the, uh, the sum of all the vectors in the diagram is zero. And you can see, in fact, by rearranging the the equality k1 plus k2 plus k3 plus k4 in various ways you can you can see um, you can see how it works at each, uh, each point. So k1 plus k2 is uh, flowing this way, and k3 plus k4 is flowing the opposite way. So if you reverse the arrows, you change the sign. Uh, you change the sign. And let me point out here the inner product of two of these vectors is called a Mandelstam invariant, usually denoted S i j, and by convention, there's a, there's a two there. Okay, so here, first, uh, first exercise. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna step back and pretend we don't know anything about Feynman diagrams, pretend we don't know a lot of combinatorics or math, and just give you a simple piecewise linear function. Okay, so this is a function on R2. S, I, J are real parameters. Take the sum, the weighted sum here, and, and we have this min function. Now, S, uh, the S, I, J's satisfy some identities. They're assumed to 
sum to zero, they're symmetric. If you have S, any repeated index, S2, 2, you get zero. And finally, if you sum SAB all over all Bs equal one to four, you'll get zero. Okay, so uh, notice that due to this relation, this is in fact invariant under simultaneous translation. You can see uh, scale just translate and it pops out a zero. So the exercise is find conditions for the convergence of this integral. Take the exponential of the in, uh, exponential of the negative of f4 of y. So find the conditions for a convergence and show that it evaluates to the simple sum of two things. Okay, so, and, and of course, you remember the previous slide, these are the, the same two things we saw right here. Okay, you can guess what's coming. We did case four, so we have case five. That's a little trickier. So what's the extra solution? Something is positive, right? The S's are something exactly. positive. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the solution is, of course, you have to assume that these are positive, and uh, the, the, the non-obvious part is why that is why, why that is sufficient to, uh, to guarantee convergence. So you have to rearrange, just rearrange this a little bit, and then you, and you'll, uh, then you'll figure out that the coefficients of these guys, of, uh, of S, S1, 2, and S2, 3 are, yeah, are positive. So in the case n equals 5, uh, we have uh, another simple, relatively simple, piecewise linear function. Again, translation invariant by t simultaneously. Again, the sum of all of the Mandelstam invariants is equal to zero. And again, we have this, uh, these five conditions, these five equations, sum S12 plus S13 plus S14 plus S15 is zero. And uh, again, as Baron pointed out, there are the, the conditions on which this converges. Well, the, the, the question is to prove that it converges to this. And uh, the magic is, well, the magic, the magic is that this actually happens. Okay, but the, uh, to do it analytically, um, you, you can do it analytically, and uh, it's not too bad. You, this, this integral expands into a sum of five different integrals, and each of those is obvious. Uh, essentially, essentially obvious what it is. Okay, so these have some nice interpretation with polyhedral cones. Each uh, each integral, each of the five integrals in the in the summation corresponds to a one of the five cones in a uh, in a set of cones. Mick? Yes. Just to make sure I'm understanding you, so that the five integrals come from just deciding where those minima happen. Is that is that what you mean? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the the regions of linearity of this function are the are the core, are the, the yeah they they determine the five integrals. It splits up on those. Yes. Well, since there are a lot of combinatorials, so these five things are triangulations of a pentagon. Triangulations of a pentagon, vertices of the isosahedron. Yes. Yeah, and uh, we'll introduce some notation later to. Uh, to emphasize that, in fact, you'll, you'll see it a little more clearly that it actually is the triangulations of a pentagon, of a polygon. Well, here are the cones. So uh, let's go to the origin. Our piecewise linear function f lifts into the third dimension. So we get this piecewise linear surface and uh, project back down into the horizontal plane, and you see that the integral over this guy takes the value 1 over s2, 3 times s1, 2, 3. And then you have the sum, the five integrals sum as you like. And there's a nice way, let me see, so a cool feature, if you're given, suppose we, uh, 
Um, yeah, suppose we wanted to recover the poles of our rational function m phi super 2. So that's the, that's the value of the integral. Suppose we wanted to recover that. Well, if we knew the set of five special input vectors, then we could plug those into f and we get exactly the poles. Does anybody recognize these five input vectors? Federico's vector. <laughs> almost, almost. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, the the normal vectors to the Pentagon in the in the low day in the low day uh, scheme. So, yeah, they're they're the uh, and in the previous picture they are the directions of the red arrows. Okay, general then. Here's our function, very compact. Take a min. Um, Take a min of these n minus uh, n minus two one or two choose two something uh, guys and uh, yeah then we have these denote s a up to b the the, the sum of all s i j's for i j in the interval a b again we have the n linear relations and. Uh, yeah, so that, that's our theorem. Uh, the theorem is that if the S, if the S, A, B's, S, A, dot, 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 B, are positive, then this integral converges. And it converges to, to this, uh, this amplitude coming from physics. So, um, yeah, so, so here's, uh, in case you uh, want to see the uh, slide two answer, well, this is what it looks like. This, um, exactly one of these has to be uh, zero. Not both of these can be non-zero at the same time, and in particular, they're both. Can, can, can I yeah. interrupt you again? So, so you wrote, the, so the integral is written as an integral over r to the n minus three. Ah, yes, I think but I know where you're going. there, it says drop plus. So there are experts here on the positive Grassmann. Ah, yes, uh -huh. Positive drop. So in which sense is this integral an integral over drop plus g to n? Ah. Yes, excellent, thank you. <laughs> in fact, what this, this is, um, what we are actually doing uh, is integrating over the set of all positive tropical Plucker vectors, and right, and, and this is a parameterization of the positive tropical Plucker vectors. And I, I think you would recognize this uh, the, the the functions in F. I think you would recognize those from you might recognize those from the the cones in your paper on the positive tropical gas Okay, so that r to the n minus three is secretly the parameterization of trop plus two. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, so I'll, I'll define, uh, we, we get up only on the trop 3n, trop plus 3n in this talk, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what we'll need. Okay, so here is the, uh, here's a different notation. Instead of using all of these lots of indices, well, <clears throat> I'm going to use this notation, which is not just a notation, it'll have a uh, be derived from uh, com uh, combinatorial geometric derivation, but for now we'll take it as a definition. S23, let it be eta13. Um, S234, eta14. So we have an eta ij, in general equals s i plus 1, i plus 2 up to j. Um, yeah, and so we can rewrite m25. Very nicely. So, and uh, they form the five. They form five collections on the vertices of uh, of the Pentagon. So, um, yeah, and and you can see very nicely also that if you connect any two of the vertices, they share exactly one eta ij each case. So the eta ij eta one three in some sense, in a strict sense, corresponds to the facet that edge, co-dimension one face of the isosahedron. Okay, 
Okay, so so I promised to uh, explain what these. I just promised to explain what the eta ij's are. Um, and in order to do that, let me formalize the construction of the Mandelstam invariance. Okay, so the eta, the the sij Mandelstam invariance, they live in what's called the kinematic space. It is a subspace of R to the n choose two, cut out by the n linear relations. As such, um, the second ingredient we need is the hypersimplex, the second hypersimplex. Okay, so this is a cross section of the unit cube where the coordinates sum to two. Um, Okay, so here's the idea. We're going to take, we're going to introduce, uh, by some magic, we're going to introduce this linear function. Okay, it's just a, it's a stepwise increasing linear combination of the coordinate functions. One, two, three, up to n minus one. And it's cyclic. It wraps around n. Okay, with that in hand, uh, with any, for any distinct a and b in 1 to n, define this linear function on the kinematic space. Okay, so these coefficients are constants now. These are evaluated on just points, right? So e a, e b, e c, e d are the coordinate, the standard basis for our n. So we're evaluating L just on a vector in Rn. So these are constants. So this is a function on the kinematic space. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I will, by the way, I, I want to say this is getting a little complicated. So if you were hoping to do the exercises, I'll, you know, I, I can email them. Uh, I'll post them to my website as well if, if you're interested. So, um, yeah, okay, so I think I have next. I have an illustration of some identities. So, well, the first exercise um, is to show that eta ij equals that sum, equals uh, s i plus one, i plus two up to b, up to, up to j. So from this formula, I claim that you can deduce that identity. Eta again? Can you go back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, some examples. It, uh, if the indices are, you'll notice here, well, do you see the, do you see what's going on here? Like the, the wider, the farther apart the i and j are, the longer the expression is. So in particular, when i and j are adjacent cyclically, you get zero. When, there's, when, there, when they differ by, when there's a single guy, then you get an S, just a single Mandelstam, and then you get some multi-particle poles. Okay, and uh, the last example is an S25. You can, uh, you can express any Mandelstam invariant in a very nice way as a sort of a bracket of the eta's. Okay, so if you like that, that, that might be one way to deduce that identity. There's a more abstract theoretical way you can do it via subdivisions. I mean, uh, height functions and subdivisions, you can say these two induce the same subdivision. But this is, uh, it's very satisfying to, uh, to, to, it's a little bit satisfying to, uh, to prove that. Yeah. In these equations, the only relations that you're using for the s's are those like sum of s i j equal to zero. Yes, yes, just those n, n, n linear relations. Yeah, that's uh, equivalent dual to linearity. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of subdivisions, I just want to show you what what like what, what's in, what are the nuts and bolts of this function. The, the set of coefficients of the eta. The, uh, well, what's happening is that you have a, you know, so th this is a surface, and we're lifting the function h equals min of L1, L2, L3. This is the surface in a toy example, n equals 3. 
these are three sheets coming up at constant slope. And uh, that, that is the picture. Although in, at n equals 3, there is nothing. Physically speaking, the three particle amplitude is trivial. But, yeah, so, but this, this illustrates what is going on. That uh, we have a surface, the, 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 the pole is constructed from a piecewise linear surface, the amplitude is constructed from a piecewise linear surface, and the regions of linearity have a... Uh, Do you mind just showing us that piecewise linear surface, the formula for it? The, uh, the original guy? Yeah, the, well, the one that is being depicted in your picture. Oh, yeah. Um. Yeah, so it's... Uh, you know, three things, in the uh, direction of the vial vectors, something. I know, and, and you can see the, the actual values of the heights um, are, are given there. So. Sorry, uh, how do the x's relate with the si, uh, the x's that you wrote there, are they sij's or aided? Um, yeah, right. So this is this is pre eta. Pre eta. Okay. Yeah. So well, to get eta, we would evaluate x one, x two, x three on some constant linear combinations of basis vectors. So in particular, it's going to we're going to put in like a, a one one zero 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 negative one negative one vector. Okay. Okay. And that'll be the coefficient of the Mandelstam array. Okay, so uh, so we're just to review. Um, yeah, so the uh, consider the usual. This is the standard, I guess, uh, realization to the low day of the isosahedron. Remember, we're saying that um, if you evaluate the integral for m to n, well, the uh, the sum. The individual sum ends, the individual integrands, and in the, in, if you expand or in bijection with the vertices of the association. Well, th this is what I want to discuss now. Okay, so um, consider this Newton polytope, x1 plus x2 plus x times x2 plus x3, etc. The Newton polytope, by construction, it's the convex hull of a set of all exponent vectors. Right, so that means expand, and then you get a 2, 1, 0. Take the set of all these guys, take the convex hull, and then you get the, uh, the polytope. Um, so in the usual realization due to low day, the isosahedron is the product of all, uh, of all sums over, six, of all over linear intervals. It's the product of those guys. So here is the, uh, here's the construction in the case uh, n equals 6. Um, yeah, but, but so, so we're, we're about to move in a slightly different direction. So maybe I should uh, pause quickly for uh, more, for any uh, questions. Okay, okay so uh, yeah. So here we take the convex hull, the set of all exponent vectors, get the Newton polytope. On the other hand, on the other hand, we have our, we can evaluate m, the n, the six particle amplitude m to six, and we get these nice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times two, 14 terms. These are in bijection explicitly with triangulations of a hexagon. So each collection, each 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5 is an internal edge in the triangulation of a hexagon. Um, okay, so that, that kind of uh, brings us full circle. And, and, and now there's a, there's a standard like kind of maxim, I guess, be wise, generalize. And the idea is 
Um, well, can't, you know, you, you may have noticed there were some superscripts uh, just throughout. And so the question is, can we generalize this from M2 to M3, generalize our kinematic space from Mandelstam invariance with two indices to three indices? And, uh, but if we do that, what happens to the Newton power? Um, yeah, so that's the question. So the, uh, the kinematic space in, uh, for the three N kinematic space, again, now it's uh, R to the N choose three. And again, you have these N linear relations. So uh, sum over all triplets, all three element subsets that contain a given A for each A equals one to N. Standard, okay. Uh, that's good. Um, we'll take a next ingredient. This is ingredient two now. Um, this is, uh, we're going toward the generalization, toward the description of M3N now, okay? So next ingredient. We're gonna define polynomials and a parameterization, um, M, and we're gonna take Pluker coordinates in the, uh, the, the three by three minors of this matrix. Okay, so it's, uh, it pre parameterizes some, uh, notice the bottom row here are ones. Um, yep. Okay, so uh, the, the, uh, the important feature here is that this is a positive parameterization, which means that all three by three minors are manifestly non-negative. So they expand as just positive sums of monomials. All right, so here is, uh, here is the novel associohedron part. So from, <clears throat> in our paper, in, in joint work with Freddie, at some point we discovered this, this particular polynomial. Okay, inside it is a standard associohedron. Okay, but we also have this funny factor. The claim is that this is still an associohedron. Maybe that's yeah. So this is what you wrote down. This is a parameterization of the positive cross mod. Uh, it was it? Torres quotient. Okay, so is this the usual, you know, Kostnikov playback graph? I think this page was not, I don't know. It's a different, it's, it's one not, of the parameters. Yeah. Well, well, can you show it again? Uh, yeah. So this M, uh, the M's in terms of the X. Okay, okay, so it, okay, that's it's, the usual it one. It should be with one. paths. With ed ed edges, it's the edge parameter. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's the edge, right? Path. So it's like the path matrix of a network. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that's yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So just to make sure that all the students are on the same page. Okay, it's the usual parameterization of the positive parameter. Yeah. Although yes, there are many, and uh, yeah. Yeah. So. Different type of graphs. And so. So uh, exercise difficulty is unknown. Can one show directly our initial, our initial conjecture that this polytope, this Newton polytope, is combinatorially the same as the associahedron in, the, uh, in, uh, the, in, in this associahedron? So it, it bumps it up. This, this weird factor Y bumps this N minus this associohedron up one dimension, and we get another, we get another new associohedron. So our, our proof of this is quite indirect. We used, uh, we used some application, we, we used some of the techniques that, uh, that Bernd, if you were here, was talking about um, yesterday, and we heard a bit from uh, Federico uh, earlier. Um, and uh, I think, uh, and, uh, and it, it, it goes back to a paper with uh, Fred Cachazzo, Alfredo Guevara, and Sebastian Mizera. And I think uh, one of these authors is in the back. Uh, yeah, so okay. Yeah, our, our proof was quite indirect. It had to, uh, it relied on that. So, uh, okay. Uh, now, now we introduce, in order to Define M3N, we do need a little bit more technology, and we need a little bit of heavy machinery here. 
And in order to do this, we'll define a positive tropical Pluger vector to be any element of r to the n choose 3 that satisfies this, uh, this set of linear, this set of n times n minus 1 choose 4 linear equations. Okay, so, uh, so thanks to Spire Williams and uh, Arkani Hamid uh, Lamb uh, Spradlin, uh, we can, we're just going to use this as a, as a definition. The positive tropical Grassmannian is the set of all positive tropical Pluger vectors. Okay. Um, so back to the parameterization. We have, we have our positive tropical Pluger vectors, and we would like to do the same thing we had at the beginning. We'd like to integrate over the set of all positive tropical Pluger vectors. In order to, to do that, well, we can't go just cone by cone. I mean, so we need a parameterization. And here is how we construct that parameterization. Take a minor of the matrix M and then tropicalize it. And uh, you get these min functions. In the tropicalization, you replace plus with min and times with plus. It's a standard procedure in tropical geometry. Here is our new F, F3N. And as, uh, yeah, and uh, let's write out the, the case uh, F3, 5 in full. Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit long, but this is written around the eight, these extension of the eta's from two indices to three indices. Um, and they have the same formula, same linear functions L, Differences, we evaluate them now on. Do you remember how many how many uh, the, how many guys there were? It was E A plus E B minus E C minus C D before. Now we have three ones, three negative ones. Okay, so uh, so we take this take this uh, eta eta a one a two a three is uh, is this linear function, and the claim is. Um, the claim is that F3n, if you integrate it, integrate its exponential, this converges when the eta's are positive. Um, and it, it converges to this function right here. So it, uh, yeah, and uh, the, the, the theorem was um, in joint work with Freddie, was the integral converges. It does converge on a particular cone in the kinematic space. In general, it's not, this cone has a lot of restrictions. It has a lot of faces. But uh, um, so and as a consistency check, you can check that when n equals 5, that it is the simple five-term relation. Now, here's where things get interesting. Uh, shifting gears, we're going to come full circle. Um, yeah, let's see, where did I get that? Yeah. Okay, the claim is that if we write M36, um, write M36, it is a gigantic expression, 48 terms. Some, you know, it has some complicated numerators, um, but if you do a series expansion and keep the, the leading order term where eta three five six is equal to zero, then you get one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen terms. But uh, and after a nice change of variable, not so obvious, it simplifies exactly to the two six. The M2 to the, to the expression for M26. So we'd like to take this observation and can we generalize this construction wherein we find M2n inside M3n? Can we generalize that? So this is so yeah. the original long expression corresponds to a four-dimensional polytope. Yes. Is this like a facet identifying this, a yes. facet? So we have this D4 associohedron and then the other little one with 14 vertices is a facet. 
so this is not the D4 isosahedron. Okay. The big one, but something it's, like this. It's, uh, the D4 isosahedron is a simple polytope in which you include additional okay. compound determinants. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's, of course, this is, it's known that in you, uh, for DN, that of course, you get isosahedral fa faces. So the, the new structure here is that for if you include just the Plucker coordinates, we've established a, a whole lot of, systematically, a whole lot of faces. And how is my time? Am I over? No, no, you're still good. Okay, good. How about eight minutes, seven, eight minutes? Okay, great. So, so on the polytope side, it's exactly right. We have a foot, this, uh, we're looking at a Newton polytope, which has four dimension four, and this corresponds to a three dimensional facet, which is combinatorially isomorphic to the n equals six isosahedron. Our, uh, our result was that if you take M3N, Okay, and you take this collection of, there should be some dots in here. Uh, there, yeah, there should be some dots right here. Uh, N minus, sorry, what the heck is that? N, sorry, that is a typo. It should be eta three, N minus one, N, eta four, N minus one, N, N minus three, n minus 1n. So we have this list of five different etas, and the result is that if you take the series expansion, or the residue, where these, uh, where all these guys are zero simultaneously, that face is come, that, uh, that residue can be identified with m2n. Or equivalently, there's a face of the of some polytope, of some new polytope, which is combinatorially isomorphic to the isosahedron. All right, so I'll, I'll just uh, I'll outline, sorry, give the, just the rough idea of the proof. Um, so it is, uh, the, the point is, the main point is that if you choose, if you're very careful about your parameterization, um, if you're very careful about the parameterization, choosing it like exactly like this, then this log function expands with coefficients eta 3 n minus 1 n, eta 4 n minus 1 n, exactly those given in the statement of the theorem. And moreover, the dots are finite as the z's go to zero. Okay, so that, that's, the, that's the technical part. That's the technical part. So the, the, the idea is we're going to send the z's to zero and then identify the isosahedron. That will provide the, the, the key to unlocking the isosahedron from this massive beast. Can you say something yeah. about that parameterization up top? Like, is that yeah. cost of parameterization? What are your requirements? Where do yeah. the x's and z's lie? Yeah, so... Um, so it, it, has a, it has a very interesting property. It is not a positive parameterization, but it has an interesting property. When you send the z's, and th this is actually the main point, but yeah, the, when you send the z's to zero, and when you act with the torus to make these to one, and then... Which then one? Which to one? The, the, the bottom row. Just divide by the bottom row. So all of these to zero, divide by the bottom row. Then you can change to the positive parameterization, a specialization of the positive parameterization. So there's a unique solution. There's a unique change of variable that takes this to the positive parameterization if you set some of them to zero. So uh, let, let me, uh, yeah. So in fact, what the, the picture is something like this. We have here are the columns one, two, three. Columns one, two, three. Uh, 
four, five, n. So columns one, two, three, four are independent, and the remaining guys lie on a projective line. They're just collinear. That's the picture that is being described when the z's go to zero. Okay, back to Newton polytopes. Our Newton polytope picture. I claim that we're going to implement that change of variable and turn this guy into an associahedron. The standard associahedron. Modulo one, one detail. So it's supposed to be an associahedron, but this guy, these polynomials in here are not very nice looking. So there's a key that unlocks it. We'll see that if you take some, just take, you know, take a deformation of that guy, you know, each, raise each contribution to some exponent, I mean, integer, positive integer or something, then applying the change of variable, uh, it brings you to the standard isosahedron with some non-zero exponents. They can be negative, but you can, you can, there's a choice that is positive, but yeah, so that, that's the uh, thing. Um, so here's for the n equals six case. We had, we had the parameterization from before. Uh, this, we divide by the bottom row and, uh, and then get these cross-ratio type things. And then just set these equal to each other. This ascends to, that goes to one, that goes to one. It has a unique solution. Now note here that there is no x13. That x13 has been set to zero, if you were noticing. Um, here's the solution. It is what it is. Um, let me leave it as an exercise if anyone wants to. Yeah, I, I, do, I do not know the significance of these alternating products. So, Products of linear yeah. forms with positive coefficients. Yes, but it's very nice. <laughs> so then, for instance, these, these simplify beautifully. Right? Just products of linear forms with positive coefficients. Yep. And that's it. Um, so let me conclude with some uh, comments. Is there, is there a general story for an M, K, N? So until now, we consider only K equals 2 and K equals 3. Can we replace, can we look at higher tropical Grossmannians, trop plus K, N, G, K, N? And we found, work in progress, we found that we have sort of a stack of associahedra such that you get more and more into, you get more and more of these exotic factors. So we have one associahedron, then we have a stack of additional factors that, uh, yeah, that's what we've observed. Um, but it would be very cool to, uh, to come up with a, uh, an explicit understanding of why and to generalize. There's a, there should be a, a lot of other different associahedra sitting around in there that are not of this precise form. Um, and I have a conjecture here. Here's, a con here's the all KN conjecture. I'll just flash it now, and if anyone is curious about it, I'll, uh, I'll show it again during the question period. And there's summary questions. And yeah, so we took two rows, they diverged. We took the one less traveled, and that hopefully we've learned something. Thanks very much. Okay, very brief question period. Maybe. Yes, Matthew. Um, I think it's for a really nice talk. So, is this procedure connected to taking a soft limit to your bijan scalar amplitude for, uh, or, so, sorry, the, uh, yeah. So, so, right, right, so that was what we initially tried. We said we, we want to find, we want to somehow find the bijoint scalar amplitude inside the generalized bijoint scalar amplitude for the same n. And we thought, well, maybe we could get that as a soft limit or some other construction. 
didn't, I mean, didn't turn out, that was not the correct thing. I mean, one can get m to n minus 1 as a soft, right, right. But it turned, yeah, you have to take residues. What it, what it turned out is that the, you're taking a residue of a generalized bijoint scalar and getting the bijoint yeah. scalar. Yeah. So, for our question, so this is a claim about basically some faces that look like a sociohedra of the polytope dual to the fund. Um, the correspondence right? yes, That's right. Okay. That's, and uh, would that have any consequences if you think about the fun as a, reg a fun which regulates the uh, regular positive subdivisions of the hypersecret? In a sense, you would expect a kind of subposet of these regular subdivisions of any hypersimplex which looks like the one of the hypersimplex Chikomari. I, I, I have thought so, and I still believe so. But, I, yeah, I, I don't have a, a very nice description of it in general. I, I, I think there may be one, but, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not satisfying yet, but we'll see. Stay tuned. Okay, <laughs> so why don't we uh, keep further questions for the coffee break, and let's continue in one minute with the next talk. Thank you very much.